So I'm currently logged in as a user that I've already gone through the flow where I filled out the credit card information and have purchased and have a subscription with this product. And so we tell them thanks for paying. And what I want to do is take this to the next level and allow them to change the credit card that they have on account. So here's the user that I'm talking about right here. So right now they have a MasterCard and we can see the last four digits are 4444. So what I want to allow the user to do is we're going to be charging them monthly for this particular product. So we want to be able to allow them to change the credit card that they use um, for next month's billing. So we're going to update that. So we're going to start by coming over here to the back end and creating a mutation for this. So we're going to copy this and I'm going to say change credit card. And now we can actually use the same thing we're using for create subscription. We're going to take a source, which is basically the ID for the credit card. And then we're going to take a user is what we're going to return. So let's create a new resolver here and I'm going to copy kind of some of the logic that we use for create subscription um, and paste it in here. And I'm going to add a comma there, and here I'm going to say change credit card. And then I'm just going to close it off down here. Alright, so the first thing that we're doing here is making sure the user is logged in, and then making sure we can find a user. But there's some other cases we might want to check for. For example, if the user doesn't have a Stripe ID yet, there's really no reason for them to change their credit card. If they don't have a Stripe ID, they haven't purchased the account, or they don't have any credit card on file, so there's really no need we don't have them as a Stripe customer yet, basically. Um, and the other thing is if the user hasn't changed their account, so um, the type is not equal to paid. So if they're not a paid user yet, there's really no reason for them to change their credit card. So if this user is on trial or is canceled, there's no need for them. So it's really only the users that have, we've gone through this create subscription and we've created a Stripe ID for them and we've set the type to pay that we want them to now be able to change their credit card. All right, so if they made it past these checks, the actual thing is actually pretty easy. We're going to await and just say stripe.customers.update. We wanna pass in the ID of the customer we wanna update and that's just gonna be at the Stripe ID we have stored. And then we pass in what we wanna update about that user. In this case, we're just gonna update their source. So we just pass the source in and then that's it. And it's gonna update their credit card. And now we're gonna return a user. So let's go ahead and do this on the front end now, or at least call this. So we are able to get a source last time by using this Stripe checkout component. And we're gonna use the same thing. So I'm gonna just copy the subscribe user, um, paste it in here. And now I'm gonna rename this to change credit card. So we're going to have a change credit card mutation and I can copy that, paste it in there and give it an uppercase and we're going to say change credit card. Everything else can stay the same. We're still going to be taking in a source, which is going to be a string. I've added a new uh, mutation here, so I want to create the types for it. So I'm going to say yarn gen types um, in the directory. And now I can use those types here. So I'm going to say change credit card. And that's going to be the mutation right here that we just did. So that's what I want to call. And now I can change these. So instead of that, I want change. And it doesn't look like it exists yet. So I open up my schema. And now it does change credit card. And so we're going to use that right here. So change credit card mutation. And then use our variables there. Um, and then everything else here can work the same way. So we're gonna be rendering a Stripe checkout and then when the user puts in their new credit card, we're gonna take that token, we are gonna then just send it up. So let's check this out in action now. So I actually need to render this, so let's come back. And the account, instead of saying, take them to this paid page, I'm just going to render the change credit card component. Change credit card. Uh, did I rename this? No, I didn't. I was going to say change credit card. And I'm just going to say export there. Um, so it's easier to import. So change credit card. There we go. And let's see. Uh, me query. Are we not exporting this me query from this anymore? Um, 
let's see what it doesn't like. Has no export member me query. So if I look at my schema over here, we do not have a me query. We do not. Oh, you know what? It's not looking inside of this anymore. So what I told it to look for is all files that have a TS X extension and not just a TS. Um, so that's actually a problem in my, uh, my generate types over here. So notice how I told it to look for .tsx. Uh, I'm not sure the best way to make it look for .tsx and .ts, so I'm just gonna, for now, rename this to me.tsx. And now if I regenerate the types here, I think it should be able to find the me query because it's coming from uh, generating it from this. And I'm just going to restart the TypeScript server and it should be good to go. And I can also come over here and see what's going on there. Um, oh, you know what? Now that we are doing uh, create a new file, usually you just have to restart the server. So what we're going to uh, do when that's finished is go ahead and put in a new credit card and see if the user credit card changes on the back end. All right, that looks good. So shouldn't say thanks for paying. Oh, we just need to go to the account page. Uh, so I'm need to re-log in, so cnc.com. Um, and instead of, I guess we really should rename this instead of pay with card. Um, think, is it name? I don't know if name's the right thing. Um, change credit card. Um, yeah, that looks like it's the wrong prop. All right, I'll have to look at the, what the exact prop is to change it. We'll just go ahead and make sure it works for now. And I'm gonna open up inspect so we can see what the response is. So let's go ahead and pick a different credit card besides MasterCard. So let's do a Visa card. And put in our email. And go back. Okay. All right, looks like it was successful and looks like we got a user back. So now on my Stripe dashboard, if I refresh the page, we should have a new credit card for this user. And sure enough, we see in the cards, we now have a visa, so cool. That looks like it worked. Now there's one last thing that I wanna do to make this a little bit better. So right now, usually you don't want people to just change their credit card without them knowing what credit card they actually have on here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna store the last four digits to the credit card in the database. That way we can just say, hey, your current credit card ends with 444 or whatever, would you like to change that? So to do that, we're gonna start by creating a new column in our entity over here. So I'm gonna say um, CC last four. And this is going to be a text column that is nullable. Um, and then I'm going to, in my resolvers now, I want to be able to get the credit card information. And we actually get the last four digits of the credit card when we use Stripe checkout. So we can just take this as another argument. So CC last four is going to be a string. And I want that both when we create a subscription and when we change the credit card number. So now my resolvers, um, down here I can say source cc last four, and we're gonna say user.cc last four is just equal to that. And we can copy this and we can do the same thing here. And we'll do that there. All right, so let's just recap what we just did. So now in our create subscription, when we uh, basically first subscribe the user to our plan, we are going to take the credit card number that they used and store that in our user table, or we now have the last four digits of the credit card. We're also gonna do the same thing, or update the table here, whenever they change the credit card, so we have the latest credit card information. So now in my type defs over here, my user, I can now send back a CC last four, which is sometimes undefined, so we'll say just a string like that. All right, so now on the front end, let's change this. So now over here, I really wanna be requesting the uh, credit card information for that user, so CC last four. In 
in our me query, but I also want to do it over here in my change credit card because I want to see when we get a new one and also in my subscribe. So in multiple places now, I'm wanting to get the same information back and I don't want to have to update it every time. And there's actually something we can use with Apollo to help us out here. It's called fragments. So we're going to create a fragment on a user. So here I'm going to create a new folder called fragments and what's called the user fragment uh, .ts and we're going to export const and I need to I think I need to make this .tsx so it it gets found as a type so I'm going to say uh, user fragment and I guess I can give this I think a lowercase u I'm not sure uh, how to actually capitalize this uh, but how it works is we're going to say gql and we're going to paste that in so let's import gql and this is coming from graphql tag give that a save so how fragment works is we give it a name so for example i'm going to call this user info and we say the type that it works on so in this case it's going to be user and then we specify all the fields that we want to request so in this case i would like to get the id email and the type or also the CC. All right, so now this fragment I can use in all those different places. So now here I can say dot, 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 and we're gonna say user info. And then I just need to pass in as a string template uh, the name of this, so I called it user fragment. And you'll notice user info is what I use to spread right there. So user fragment. Um, and let's go ahead and import that as well. And it's not giving me any action. Um, I think something broke, because I want to get auto completion there. Let's go ahead and just do it the old fashioned way right now, I guess. Um, and let's make sure, yep, I exported it, cool. So I'll copy that. And this is coming from dot 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 fragments. And so we're going to do the same thing everywhere. Everywhere we want to use this me data. And I'm just going to restart my TypeScript server because it looks like it turned off. So here I'm also going to use it. OK, first I see red popping over here. I just want to make sure I'm doing this right. Oh yeah, this is not a GraphQL tag. This should be um, Apollo Boost. I keep forgetting that. And then me, this should be fragments slash user fragment. There we go. Uh, this, see, I really need TypeScript. I can't live without it. Uh, let's go here and say dot 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 user info. And then we're going to say user fragment. And then also in our subscribe user over here. And now you'll notice also that I'm using, I'm uh, inserting the fragment below the actual mutations and stuff, always below everything. So dot 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 user info. So now anytime I want to get more information or update the types here, it's going to reflect in all those different places. And I want to say we get to add the user also in the login. Yep, we do. So dot 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 user info, user fragment. All right, and we also need to update both our subscribe and our change credit card because now they take a second parameter here, um, and that's going to be the CC last four, which is a string. So we're going to say comma CC last four is equal to that. So I can copy this, and we can add it to our subscribe over here, and I can copy that as well. Okie dokie, so let's go ahead and now pass those as variables in. So now cc last four is going to be token.card.cc, or it just looks like it's just last four. And we're going to do the same thing, copy this and our change credit card over here. Now it's not happy with me type wise, and that's because we added some new fields and we need to regenerate this. Um, looks like we have to restart the server as well. Okay, so let's come back here. In my website, I'm going to say generate types. And looks like we did everything correctly, surprisingly. That's good. 
Um, and let's go to change credit card because we have something wrong here. Oh, I think it just hasn't refreshed yet. Let's say last four, given our save, it's gonna recompile. And now it works, now that it has those new types. Still hasn't caught up here. I can restart the TypeScript server if I want to for it to catch up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And, oh yeah, we should probably also display the credit card number so we can actually see it too. So that's gonna be in my view right here. So I'm gonna say div. And notice I'm only displaying it for users that are paid here. And I'm gonna say div your current last four digits. And we're gonna say data.me.cc last four. All right, so now I can see the last four digits of my credit card number. This particular user doesn't have it, so let's go ahead and create a new user or a login with a user that will have it. So let's go to my dashboard. I think I had a couple more users. Yeah, let's do a at a.com. Well, actually, I need to create a total new user who hasn't even gone through that process. So q at q.com, register him, create an email. Now let's go ahead and pay for him. Um, I already have testing up, so let's pick a credit card. Let's do American Express. Okay, let's go ahead and pay. And the last four digits are 0005. And we, we can see the last four digits are 005 here. So perfect. So now we can edit this if we want to. So let's say I want to change to a different American Express. I can pay with card. By the way, this is not actually paying. This is changing our credit card number. So now I'm changing it to that and the last four should be 8431. So now when I pay and we get the new user back, it will go ahead and it'll automatically update the last four digits of our credit card. So cool. So we have finished. What I wanted to do today, we're now able to change a user's credit card number who's already paid for our subscription.